individual treatment. And so they should be treated in a very individualistic way. So, and I think many other diseases are like this but as well. Problem, but the problem, as we talked about before, with inherent built-in conflicts between giving the greatest good to the greatest number of people and actually individualized medicine, I think this is this is where it where it comes comes through. I mean, you've been involved in many phase two clinical trials, where in the phase two, some of the patients who had two years to live live twenty years, and then when the trial is done in the placebo control fashion, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Fifty percent of them fail. And the reason for that is this big problem of we're all different, and even every multiple myeloma or COPD patient, we use the word COPD to describe a manifestation. But not only the genetic differences between us, but also the differences of the inciting factors of the disease cause really every disease to be different. And every disease, I mean, within the name COPD, one could make thousands of subcategories. The problem is, until now, we never had the ability to categorize them at a personalized level. It appears this personalized bioinformatics approach, this is one of the possibilities that comes from it. Well, there is no way back because we know the gene, like I said, the building blocks. We know that every patient is different. Uh, and it's not only about emotion, mentality, and body, but also how it responds to medications and how aggressive is disease and so forth. Uh, I think unless this information is really properly integrated, uh, we will never have really uh, effective treatments. So I think undertaking this road is, is the only road. There is no way back. And no matter what conflicting interests are there, uh, individualized medicine is the medicine of 21st century. Um, it's, it's called custom-made medicine. Um, and is the most important development, I think, um, in this part of the century. And um, I'm, I'm impressed with David that he sees that and pursues that direction. No, thank you very much. Um, Let's see. I think we have a, uh, uh, a question here. How close are you to phase uh, phase two? We're in preclinical phases right now while we're working with uh, uh, wavelength uh, on the laser device and identifying um, uh, combinations of FDA approved drugs that, uh, that may potentially enhance this. The next step uh, uh, for intest at this point is really uh, uh, once we have refined the model which we've been seriously working on, then we will go into uh, uh, I think uh, testing with uh, with small animals, gathering data, and then looking to uh, to move forward with uh, with clinical testing. The thing that is is and, and here again I'm not a scientist but I'm in layman's terms. The thing that is, is exciting about our model is that basically the components of the model exist with, with um, components that are either FDA approved that we can readily use for our application or, or FDA approved where there would be maybe a, a limited request for uh, an opportunity to utilize a technology or, or a drug for a specific application. So we don't see that we have a lengthy hurdle to go through, whereas a lot of drugs uh, uh, that are used for treating various diseases do have lengthy clinical trials, you know, phase one, two, and three, and, uh, and you know, extensive data that's collected. In our case, my understanding from, from all our scientists is that uh, uh, we should be able to fast track this once we feel we've refined the model to the point that it's ready for for prime time? Yeah, because uh, you know, laser is is approved modality uh, for many indications. Uh, safety profile is very well um, defined, and so um, it will be much easier to obtain uh, approval um, for COPD than with other drugs. Um, and again, we, we want to create something that's non-toxic, readily um, to uh, to toler uh, very well tolerated, and uh, I think it will not take too much time to get to phase two. I mean, excellent. You know, an interesting, an interesting maybe parallel is a company here in town in San Diego that was called Maxim, where basically they took histamine, which 
histamine is been on the market and it's part of the natural process and I identified a new use for histamine and they were able to very rapidly accelerate all the way into the phase 3 and achieve a marketing approval for acute myelocytic leukemia. Um, and basically I, I, I like that parallel a lot in comparison to, to the lasers because the lasers, unlike the histamine, could be, they already are on the market. And um, essentially what Antest has done, and why we appreciate collaborating with Antest a lot, is they have identified how the lasers stimulate stem cell activation and lasers are already on the market. So the combination of the laser with the mobilization could be a very exciting and rapid to market. We have a couple questions that actually have poured in. I guess we've, we've thrown some fuel on the fire and, uh, and people are very interested. Uh, one question is, uh, uh, how will Metastem play a role with NTEF? Um, I, you know, from our standpoint, Tom is a very close personal friend. Uh, Dr. Carey is a very, a very close personal friend, and they're two of the most brilliant researchers that I know. Um, I think that the direction that, that we're moving with our COPD model, um, they're enthusiastic about participating in, in any possible uh, uh, means of support. I think that uh, uh, as we move forward, um, that will clarify itself. I don't think there's anything that we can really say beyond that right now. 